Welcome back, Bannock folks. You're tuning in to another episode of Bannockdotes, the podcast that holds it down for the underground sound here in Ontario, Canada. And I'm your host, Phil Paxton. Thank you for joining me today. We got a good one for you. If you aren't already, subscribe to the podcast, whether you're listening to on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. If you're any in any of that kind of stuff or another podcast app, just hit up the old subscribe button. If you're, of course, listening to this or watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. What are you doing? Punch that like button right underneath the video and uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think of the episode. Do you like the, uh, do you like what I'm asking? Do you like what I'm doing? Let me know. Uh, I'm pretty open to everything. Of course, follow us on our Instagram. That's at Banecdotes, B-A-N-D-E-C-D-O-T-E-S, where we do all our clips and post all the info that we've got going on with the show or anything related to the show. Shows, you know, local shows that we're putting on, it's all there on our Instagram. So make sure you're following us there. Speaking of local shows, let's just dive right into it. We got lots of cool local Ontario shows happening. But before I get into it, let me let me just tell you real quick. If you think that I've missed your show or I'm I'm some like ignoring it, it's not. I've got a lot going on. Send me your show. Send me your show flyer. I will definitely plug it on the show. Uh, I'm building up for July, so next episode, send me you know send me all the shows that you have going on in July, and uh, we'll plug it on the show. All right, let's get right into it. If you're in Kitchener today, check out the study room, aka. Ask a Punk, and you can check out Massanera, Terry Green, and Basque, and that's happening today in Kitchener. Constraint and Reality Tonight are putting on a couple shows, June 16th at the Milton Legion, June 17th at the Doors Pub in Hamilton, and June 18th at Vastrovi in Toronto. Tomorrow, Thursday, June 16th, in St. Catharines, we have the Mayside celebrating the release of their new beer, Good Old Hayes IPA, with their friends, the Royal North, and that's happening at the Warehouse. Definitely go check out that gig. Sunday, June 19th, in Windsor, we have Hexus, Hell is Other People, and Nethereth at the backstage. Trauma Model and Hexus are doing a run of shows together. Starting that off June 21st in St. Catharines. That's a Banecdotes Presents. We got Hexus, Cothra, Trauma Model, Temple of Night, and Deciphering the Pale. And that's at Warehouse. That's going to be a killer show, folks. I just want to let you know this Hexus band that's coming from Denmark, Copenhagen to be specific, they have been doing a whole Canada-wide tour. They've started off in Vancouver and they're going all the way to Halifax and they're playing every single day in June. So please definitely go check out these folks. They're working hard. They've probably paid a ton of money to get here. So let's, let's show them a good time. Let's show it how we do it in Canada. The following night, June 22nd, they're in Kingston at the Overtime. June 23rd in Ottawa at the Dominion Tavern. June 25th in Montreal at Piranha Bar. That's a rad bar. I think it's uh, played there a couple times. Tuesday, June 21st. In Ottawa, at the Brass Monkey, we have Suffocation, Atheist, Surreptition, Intrill, and Gland. Thursday, June 23rd, in Toronto, at the Hard Luck, we have Dayglo Abortion's Hate Speech album release with Citizen Rage, Dragged In, and Losers. In Hamilton that night, however, at the Doors Pub, we have Cognitive, Tombstoner, Lacuder, and World's Grasp. Friday, June 24th, in Windsor, at the backstage, we have Cognitive, Tombstoner, and Vile Driver. In Toronto that night, Fuzzed and Buzz presents a special night with Mouth Congress, Leather Uppers, Astral Witch, and Low Orbit at the Bovine. Saturday, June 25th, in Niagara Falls at the Upper Space, we have Fight War, Not Wars, Red Cross Benefit Show with Welland Wasted, Border City Beatdowns, Dominion, Elephant, and Sin. If you're in Ottawa that night, at House of Targ, we have They Grieve, Cothra, Moratorium, and Grandmother. In London that night, however, if you're at the Richmond Tavern, you can definitely check out Single Mothers, playing with Mall Crimes, and Strawberry Cough. 
But if you're in St. Catharines that night at the Mansion House, we have our friends in Casey Baker Neon Cowboy playing with Addercliff and Brett Friesen. Sunday, June 26th, hey, that's my birthday. In St. Catharines at the Warehouse, we have an Indoor Shoes Presents Cognitive with Tune Stoner, Ocular Trauma, and Mindswell. Those kids in Mindswell are super sick. Definitely go check out that show. We have Weedus and Kixie doing a couple shows together, June 24th at the Bitmore Theater in Oshawa, June 25th at the Legion in Tilsonburg, and June 26th at the Casbah in Hamilton. And of course, September 9th and 10th in Mississauga at the Hansa House, Damage Control and Soulless Music Promotions presents Hold Your Ground Fest 22 with Never Ending Game. Mind Force, Pain of Truth, Dare, Momentum, Gridiron, Cohesion, Cold Shoulder, Endgame, Mile End, and many more. Get your tickets at holdyourgroundfest.com. Wow, folks, lots of cool shows happening this summer, and we're only in June. I'm only telling you about the shows in June. Trust me, there have already been shows that have been announced for July that I haven't been able to plug yet. We'll do that next week. But... Lots of cool stuff. So, of course, go support your local venue that's helping putting this stuff on because uh, we're, we're getting the rest off uh, off the gears and uh, we're, we're finally kind of in motion. It kind of feels like that way. Uh, you know, we Comeback Kid just came to St. Catharines and that was an incredible show. Uh, it was a sold-out gig and uh, <clears throat> I saw so many friends there that I hadn't seen in such a long time. It was a good time. All right, enough rambling about that. Let's get on to our guest this week. We have Tom Fitzpatrick. Now, he plays in Perfect Limbs, and he also plays in The Northern. He came down here, and we had a great conversation. We get talking about all sorts of wacky stuff. And, uh, you know, he says he didn't like Pokemon, but then he... He, he went on to talk about how he he was obsessed with it for a couple weeks or so. So I'm calling you out right now, Tom. I think you do like Pokemon. I think you were just afraid to admit it on the podcast. All right, folks, let's get into it. There's a show coming up in Milton with uh, our boys from Reality Tonight, right? Yes. Con- I heard Constrain. about that. Yeah. That's cool. Do many there. shows happen in Milton? Uh, I haven't heard of much other than that, other than, uh, that one. Yeah? I haven't heard of much. I think it's happening at a Legion, too. So <laughs> You could tell that like shows don't happen when, when they're happening at Legions. Yeah, for sure. Legions, man. Cool. Right on. Welcome back, Manic folks. You're watching another episode of Banecdotes. I'm your host, Phil Paxton. This is the t-shirt of the week. It's Reality and I. Those are our folks. And this week, we have Tom Fitzpatrick. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, man. How Happy are you be been? Here. Fantastic. How was your day? Today has been, uh, you know, pretty boring up to this point. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so. Right on. Uh, do you want to uh, let the audience know a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Um, my name's Tom. I play guitar and sing in a band called Perfect Limbs. And I play bass in a band called The Northern. Uh, I make art sometimes. Uh, I like pro wrestling. Nice. And uh, I beat Elden Ring last week. Oh, what? There you go. <laughs> so, That's exciting. Yeah, that was a big highlight of last week for yeah. me, for sure. <laughs> so have you been in both bands since the beginning? Perfect Limbs, yeah. We started jamming. Like We've kind of been around for a decent amount of time. Yeah. We started jamming 2015. Yeah, I think, and then we started like really kicking around maybe 2017, 2018. Uh, but with the Northern, I just joined that band like two months before the pandemic. Oh, really? Kicked, yeah. What so a time to good time to join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've been in that band now for like two and a half years, and we still haven't played a show together. No, no. But you guys have shows scheduled for this yeah. month. Yeah. So we got our first like classic Ontario Quebec run coming up at the end of the month with uh vampires everywhere and a band called hollywood nightmare uh so it's finally time yeah vampires everywhere i didn't know that they were banned still yeah i think they just came back with some new stuff like a few months ago or like a year ago cool so they're starting back up it's kind of exciting to be playing shows with them now they're kind of doing like the revise yeah. right to kind of be a part, a part of that yeah they're going around they just uh, i think they did a tour in the uk and now they're coming up here 
and then uh, yeah, that should be exciting. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, and then you've been you've been busy with uh, Perfect Limbs. Perfect Limbs has been kind of pretty quiet for the last for, couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we uh, when the pandemic hit, it kind of like really took the well, obviously took the wind out of everyone's sails. But mm-hmm. you know, we had our busiest years, twenty nineteen and uh, twenty twenty. We had a lot of cool stuff planned, some more tours, some really cool shows lined up, and that just all got all got wiped. Yeah, and it was like a huge hit to all of us. Like emotionally, it like fucked with us pretty bad like i got pretty bitter yeah and i just like felt so shitty about it for so long like i went through like a six month period where i didn't even play my guitar ever right stopped really listening to new music just kind of like separated myself from the whole music thing for a while just because i was so like bummed and i didn't really want to think about it it was tough to get into that music during that time yeah yeah it was Especially um, playing music, right? Getting excited about your own stuff. Yeah. Uh, but once we were able to, to actually, like, hang out and see each other again, we were all like, oh, okay. Now I remember how yeah. awesome this is. Yeah. So we put a lot of work in writing new stuff over the last year and a half. Um, we probably got enough demos to do a full-length plus but we just kind of cherry picked a couple songs that we really liked and just worked on them a shit ton. Yeah. Until we got to the point where it was like, this is fucking sick. Let's record this. Yeah. So we got two singles in the bag right now. And we are going to go back and pick a couple more that we like and start fine tuning those some more. But hopefully have some new PL stuff within the next month or two released. We got pretty much most of the work done is just waiting on the song to get mastered and then we got the music video all that sh- other shit taken care of so i can't wait man it's we are so proud of this new stuff and uh, i think you know people that like our band are going to be very happy with it totally and who did you record with uh we recorded with our buddy kyle from he's in nightwell Kyle Marsh yeah. Marshawn. I've been friends with Kyle for years and I still can't pronounce his fucking last name. <laughs> it's funny how that is. Eh? Yeah. Um yeah, he produced and recorded our last EP, I Watched Myself Collapse, that came out tail end of twenty nineteen. And uh yeah, so we went back and did these two new singles with him and uh sent it off to Sam Guy on a mix and sent that to Sam's guy to master. So, everything is coming together real, real nice. 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 Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I might be completely remembering this incorrectly. Did Perfect Limbs play a show in London? It was a St. Patrick's Day show with I Set My Friends on Fire. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so we, we totally played that show. Oh, it was Hellbent, right? Sinner. Oh, okay. So, and I, I believe Alex was playing drums with for, you, for you at the time, mm-hmm. and... Uh, because they had a double stage thing going on. Yeah, one in the front, one in the back. Yeah, so um, when we went to go set up, because I set my friends on fire, we're like, we're going to play, and they like bumped us, so we had to play after them. <laughs> um, th- we came into the room, and there was a kit set up on stage, and we thought it was like the house kit. So we're like, all right. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, too. I also yeah. really apologize for this. We set up our kit, we play our set, and then we're finished, and Alex totally comes up to us and is like, that's my kit. Like you guys just play, <laughs> you guys just played it, and we're like, oh, uh, and he was cool about it, but yeah. he may have, he probably was ticked off about. It. And again, I apologize, Alex. I'm sure he's cool about it now. It's years ago, but uh, yeah. that was a shit show. Hey, eh? there was like 15 bands playing in one night. It was, uh, yeah, it was a little chaotic, but that night was so much fun. Like <laughs> I still listen to that band. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Pretty regularly, I listen to like they put out a, a record called Astral Rejection a few years ago, and then they put out the like unlabelized version of it right like at last year and i think that album rips and i still listen to it sometimes and but. they were fighting to get on that one festival that's happening in vegas the when we oh were yeah 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 i wonder if everyone that bought tickets for that are still stoked about it <laughs> dude that is gonna be a fucking scorcher are like, you going to that no 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 no, <laughs> no, no i'm not going to that. that kyle did you end up deciding if you're going to that no, everyone's gonna do that. yeah, yeah exactly. it's it's kind of hard to 
gauge where that was gonna go. I mean, was it three, four days now? Oh, I don't know. I didn't know they moved it past one. I mean, well, I mean, it was inevitable they would have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. There's like freaking forty bands on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty chaotic. Um, so, is there any Ontario bands that have caught your attention within the last year or so? Um, I just kind of started dipping my toes back into the like. Okay, I got to get caught up again mm -hmm. on what's going on in the scene. Um, I can definitely give shout outs to Gavel. I think yeah, everyone's pretty hot on Gavel right now. They're yeah, fantastic, yeah, yeah. cool dudes. Um, Dylone, Dylone is sick. They're my, a really uh, cool band. My first band that we started, like I think, it's 2013. Uh, Kian from Dylone, he would play bass in that band. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, shout out to Sweet Talker. He fucking <laughs> sucked. We played three shows and then broke up. Uh, but yeah, Dylone is sick. Uh, shout out to Constrain. Yeah, uh, they're Cinco a brand new from band. Tom Lane's new band. I, he's a fantastic vocalist, so I'm happy he's still doing stuff. Yeah, Cinco. I used to work with Cinco. Oh, yeah? He worked at a warehouse. So I used to work at a bong shop in St. Catharines. Mm. I used to manage it with great time. I did it for like six years. And he worked at the warehouse. Okay. That's actually how I first met him, but it was before bands or anything. And his guitarist who played in Trauma Lanes also worked at the warehouse, mm. warehouse as well. So that's where I initially met him. So, yeah, it's good to see him making uh, music again. Their new music, that the, the music video that they put out, features the Hellbent drummer, uh, uh, Nick. He's oh, yeah. In, yeah, okay, he's yeah, in Nick. that video. I think they're, like, all eating cake. It's a <laughs> it's a weird video, but it's just cool. It's cool. Definitely go check out uh, Constrain if you, if you like screamo music. and uh, Yeah, good riffs, good tunes. For sure. So how did you end up... Uh, like getting into like metalcore and finding yourself playing like metal uh, growing up. Um, well, I have been a music kid like forever. My dad's also a musician. Mm -hmm. uh, he plays in two bands. I play in two bands. Your dad plays in a band. Yeah, he, that's cool. He's in two uh, like bar bands. I love it. Yeah. Um, they get paid way more than we do. Of obviously. course, they always do. And they're always having like, yeah. No, sometimes I'm always like, is that where I should be doing it? Like, oh, Dude, yeah. <laughs> if you want to make any amount of money, you got to be a bar band, dude. Yeah. And you get free pints too. So. Exactly. And the, everyone seems to enjoy you, right? So, yeah, yeah. It's different. But uh, so, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you oh, off. No, okay. <laughs> uh, he he kind of raised me on like the classic, like top notch bands like uh, Van Halen, Thin Lizzy, Iron Maiden, Queen, all that, Foo Fighters. And uh, around probably like sixth grade, I started getting into punk, like Rise Against, Anti Flag, um, Bad Religion, Tiny Voices Only. My Bad Religion knowledge is very, very limited to one song, which is <laughs> Tiny Voices. Um, and then a friend of mine in like seventh grade showed me uh, Writing on the Walls by Under Oath. That's a great song. And Your Sword vs. My Dagger by Silverstein. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> my 13-year-old brain was like, yo, this is nuts. I want to do this. And since my dad uh, is a musician, I have access to instruments. So I'm going to start playing one. And I picked up... I originally was not going to be a guitar player. <laughs> I I grew up wanting to play the drums. Oh, cool. And uh, so I begged my mom to get me... Uh, drum lessons so we went out to there's a place in Burlington called uh, I think it's called Rock This Way and it's I think they just do drum shit and stuff but um, the day I went to go sign up it was closed and I was so set on I'm do I'm starting today this is <laughs> where I start I was like mom just take me to Long McQueen I'll sign up for guitar lessons instead so that's <laughs> the only reason why I'm a, I'm a guitar really? player now yeah it's because the one day I went to sign up for drum lessons the place was closed <laughs> <laughs> I have terrible impulse control if if you could believe that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um bands like like Silverstein, um I s started getting really into like the Rise Core bands, Motionless and White, yep. uh Memphis Mayfire, Mice and Man Attack Attack, all that stuff. And that was oh, asking Alexandria too. Uh that was the bulk of my library through most of high school um yeah that's that's kind of how i ended up being into uh like metalcore and playing guitar and shit yeah yeah, yeah. and uh do you what was your first band you played in uh well i've 
technically been playing in bands since I was since like the first month I picked up a guitar. I was thirteen okay. and was just jamming with friends in basements, right? Yeah. Um, first band where I actually started performing was uh, Sweet Talker, which was the band with Kean, and um, most of the guys from that band are still doing stuff in the Ontario scene today. Like uh, Dan, do you know Dan Walton? The name doesn't uh, ring a bell. He was in a band called uh, Downstream. Keepsake oh, Downstream. I remember that band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, the yeah. frontman of Downstream. He played guitar in Sweet Talker. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's also did Woolly Mantis, and he's doing his own solo stuff, which is amazing. Shout out Dan. Um, and Kean, yeah, doing Die Alone. Um, Derek is in a band called Maya Blue. They're a new band. It's like funky indie rock. Um, wait, what was the, what was the question? <laughs> I was just asking you, yeah, what was your first band you played in? Was oh, like- yes. Yeah, so technically it was, it was Sweet Soccer. Um, and we played three shows and broke up. <laughs> and uh, was that like the first uh, show that you played in front of an audience? Yeah. Oh, actually, the first time I played in front of an audience was, was uh, with Dan in the high school talent show. Okay. We play- it, was, it was fucking brutal. <laughs> we played... Uh, Welcome home by Coheed and Cambria. They, two of us, just two guitars on the stage, and nothing else. Nothing, no guitar, no drums, no, no vocals, no. Just the just song, the whole, the, <laughs> just the full arranged song <laughs> over the speaker that I was playing along to. It was. Tell me that you guys were like, you played that song enough on Guitar Hero, and you're like, that's the no. song we're playing. <laughs> Dan is a huge, huge Coheed guy. Okay, and we did the talent show two years in a row and the second year we did another coheed song and we did the same thing yeah two guitars two, two guitars, guitars on the stage and that's it this is, yeah <laughs> it was brutal it was that's funny now i have this theory and maybe you can help uh you know uh, cole helped uh uh back it up um but i have a theory that most uh kids who enjoy or play metalcore uh like pokemon right yes i have heard this theory um I am not a big Pokemon no, fan. No, not a big Pokemon fan. No, I mean I I'm one of the like ultra casual fans who will pick up a Pokemon game and play it like feverishly for a week and then yeah. never touch it again. Okay. Like I played a ton of uh Pokemon Stadium Gold when I was a kid. Yeah. A shit ton of that game. <laughs> so I, I still love that game. Um I think the last Pokemon game that I played was Pokemon X. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Quit a while, right? Yeah. Not not a big Pokemon guy. Yeah. But I do love Scyther. Shout there you go. Shout out, Cole, <laughs> shout out <Scyther. laughs> There you go. Yeah. But you said you're a big fan of uh, pro wrestling as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who's your favorite wrestler? Or do you like the A&E or is it the WWE? Which- um, I think my favorite, I'll give you like my three favorites. Yeah, right that's, that's that makes sense. Say Kenny Omega is, I think Kenny Omega is the best in the world. Uh, followed closely by Brian Danielson, ex-Daniel Bryan. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And... Uh, I say AJ Styles too. There AJ you go. Styles is still fucking killing it, man. Yeah, yeah. Gotta respect AJ Styles. Oh, and Adam Cole. I'm there a big you go. Adam Cole guy, yeah. Now, if you were a wrestler, what would your persona be? <laughs> what would your finisher be? What's your entrance music? Um, okay. I'd have to do this on the indies. Uh I would I'd be the the fucker <laughs> with a PH. <laughs> with the P yeah, the fucker <laughs> yeah. with the PH. I like that. And I would come out to something by Limp Biscuit, break stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And my finish would be, you just got fucked. Yeah, I think <laughs> off the dome. That's that's what I that's what I got. I like it. The fucker. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually uh, reminds me of uh, Cole from Single Wound. Yeah. We've we've been good buddies for a while, and uh, we were trying to start like a side thing, and our go- our working title was Face Fucker. Face Fucker. But never With materialized. The pH? No, no, full fuck <laughs> with the full F. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's great. So, and I have kind of picked up. You're you're a bit of a gamer. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was gonna say like, what have you been playing lately? But now that Elden Ring's done, yeah, what have you been playing? Anything? Are you are you calm down on the games? Because um, that's a grind. Yeah, I I go through like the hyper focus phases of playing games like nonstop, and then not playing games at all for like, a couple weeks, and then picking something else up. But uh, I just replayed Hitman Three. Which is fantastic. The new Hitman games are amazing. Um, I've been playing Subnautica. Subnautica is very... I I have a weird relationship with that game because I have a terrible fear of open water and deep water. Yeah, yeah. And that game is all about being in the, the depths of the ocean. I hate that. Yeah, so it's, it's <laughs> extremely relaxing. And then 
to the complete opposite. I'm stressed as fuck, and I am hyperventilating while playing this game. But will you come across like fucking massive creatures and shit? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. A lot of uh, deep water jump scares, which I'm not a fan of. Oh man, that game does yeah. not sound for me. I would, hi- yeah, I'm right with there with you. I would, I would think it would be worse, but it's. Uh, Is it one of those games you could play in VR too? I don't think so. Um, I do have a, a PSVR though. Which oh is, yeah, which was cool for. A little while. I can't remember the last time I put the thing on my head. But, <laughs> um, uh, what else have I been playing? Um, weirdly enough, I picked up FIFA because it was free. FIFA 22. I've been playing FIFA. Nice. Um, shout out Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your team? Uh, yeah. My <laughs> my uh, childhood best friend who is from Liverpool. Yeah. He unfortunately passed away a couple years ago. Oh, but, sorry to uh, hear. So, yeah, I've been playing FIFA, Liverpool. For my boy Sean, yeah, um, and uh, a little bit of cyberpunk here and there. Yeah, yeah, getting caught up on the updates. I was gonna say, have they updated it yet? Is it any better than the release? It's right now. It's where it should have been when it was released. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah was, I did play it all the way through on release, and it was a fucking disaster. <laughs> Especially, I was playing on PS4, so it was just like chugging just everything's crashing yeah. and yeah. yeah is there anything you're looking forward to like coming up i know e3 is coming up soon so resident evil 4 remake baby oh. finally got announced there you I go am so stoked the remakes they did for resident evil 2 and 3 3 wasn't that great but the remake for 2 was fucking awesome i'm i'm a huge fan of resident evil i've actually that's what i've been playing recently i've been playing through village again yeah i'm on my, like my fourth run through that game i'm trying to get like how fast can I beat it in one sitting? That's the is that the one they just put out? Village. Yeah, yeah, it came out May of last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, yeah, that's what I meant. Like yeah. I played the one just before that. The seven. seven? Uh, Biohazard. Yeah. S- scared the shit out of me. Scary as fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I I really, I used to be someone who could not do horror at all. Yeah. Like right there with you. I watched Signs with my dad once as a kid, and then for the rest of my childhood years, I was walking down the hallway with my back to the wall. Isn't it you always know? funny? It's like a movie like that. Right? Yeah. My movie was AI. I was always scared of the... Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's just a little boy robot. How did that scare the shit out of me? I don't know, but horror movies were like... I was off of them for a while. Yeah. I, I could not do it until like... <laughs> I started taking medication for anxiety when I was like 20 years old. Yeah. And I didn't take it for very long, but once... I got used to that medication I was taking at the time. The switch flipped. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I was able to watch horror movies. I was able to play scary games. And now I'm a huge fan of everything spooky. Very, very much. I love horror movies and I love... Scary have games. you have you ever sorry have, did you ever used to play sh- have you played a show before you uh, took take those meds and have you played a show after and noticed any difference? Um, I don't... Not that I could really notice. Yeah. Um... Yeah, the the pre show jitters are always yeah. always around. <laughs> They're always around. Yeah. You always gotta take a poop, right? Yeah, no matter how comfortable <laughs> you get playing shows, like you know, we've we've played enough to be comfortable as comfortable as we can be now, but um yeah, the I never really noticed anything in regards to that. Yeah. when was the last show you played? Last show we played was March fourteenth, the week before the entire world shut yeah, down. Yeah, ours was March 1st. And like, I, yeah, I haven't been on stage. Yeah. I know people have been, shows are kind of back now and people have been planning things. But yeah, I haven't been back in, yeah, it's been two years. It's crazy, man. Like, we were going so hard for that 2019. It was so busy and it just, whew, nothing for two and a half years. It's very strange. Um, But yeah, the last show we played was at Less Than Level in Oakville with uh, Sparrows and... I can't remember the other band. Oakville's having shows though, eh? Yeah, my uh, buddy Oren, um, he's he's actually done our last two music videos and this one that's coming out soon. Um, he puts on shows. Well, he was putting on shows uh, in the Oakville area back before the pandemic hit. Right, right. Um, so yeah, we played that less than level show and one other show in March, which was with Reality Denied. Nice, nice. Uh, in... I think it was at spot one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that was their last show too. I remember Matt saying that. Yeah, what, they've they've played since since. Oh yeah, they've played of, a yeah. couple shows since. I know that they've played St. Catharines a couple mm-hmm. times. They've played uh, 
kill room a couple times. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, they've been fairly active. I think they've got to. They may, they may even have a show next week. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Not me, but I will soon find out as I get more used to being involved in the music scene. There you again. go. There you go. No, now, quick uh, question back uh, to when we were talking about games, real quick. Uh, yeah. Is there any video game soundtracks that really stuck out to you, even just growing up? Anything that you really like? A lot of people love the so- Tony Hawk soundtracks mm-hmm. growing up. Um. Yeah. Obviously, the Tony Hawk games soundtracks are incredible because it's just a whole bunch of great bands on there. But I I really like. Uh, dedicated original soundtracks like the last of us i think is my favorite it's just like so fucking it's perfect yeah i think the the soundtrack for the for the uh, two last of us games are just perfect i would say that's definitely that, that's favorite. it yeah awesome cool all right i think we can get into some uh band anecdotes with each okay. other so yeah. uh tell some of the wild stories you have from playing in both the northern and uh perfect limbs and okay. uh whatever you've got okay we could start um, with not the first time we played in the States, the second time we crossed into the States. So we were doing a short tour with a band called Crafter. Yeah. You know Crafter? Um, they're a pretty big band, right? With they, Michael Crafter? Uh, like, he used to be the ex-vocalist of... What was that band from Australia? Am no. I thinking? No, no, no. No, no, no. They're from uh, Massachusetts. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. Did a tour with Crafter and a band called Tell Lies. And uh, we were crossing into the States. And uh, the the first the first guard we came across was just a, just a dick. Okay. So we were all just on edge. Yeah. Just so nervous. And uh, obviously you get pulled into secondary because you got this big van full of shit. Yeah. And we get into the border office. And they're asking for all our paperwork and whatever. And we were having a hard time figuring out what we needed to show them. So we were all just like stressing out like crazy. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're talking about, yeah, we're a band. We're just coming over to play some shows. And obviously, what, what, are you like a, what kind of band? We're just like a metal. It's, you get, And then you get in the conversation of, I don't know how to explain this. Yeah. Uh, and then you get the, oh, like Metallica? Is it like Megadeth? Um, so we're trying to just, we're just talking to the guard about what kind of band we are. And then one of the, one of the, uh, other guards pops his head up and he goes, you guys have a breakdown? Really? <laughs> yeah. And we're like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that is the type of band we are. We have breakdowns. And he's like, oh, sick. What's, uh, what's your band name? Like, Perfect limbs. And he's typing on his computer and then we're in, the, it's, it's like 11 o'clock. So we're not the only people in the border office. There's right. like families and shit waiting to get across <laughs> and he starts playing uh detach <laughs> in on the speakers in the border office <laughs> and i'm just standing there like what is ha- like, what is happening i'm staring at this big picture of donald trump on the wall <laughs> and i'm standing in the border office trying to get into the states my band's music is playing over the speakers <laughs> and they're uh uh, supervisor comes out and he's eating a clementine and the <laughs> chorus comes on and I'm, and I'm singing on the speakers and he goes hey see, see this guy on the screen that's him right there that's him that's him and I'm like hey yeah it's me. And I was like oh great he takes a bite of his clementine and then walks off and uh, all stress relieved it's just so it was very very like what the fuck is happening yeah and we finally got all our stuff cleared got across the border um and then no oh, that's that's where that story is yeah, yeah i was gonna say that's, that's where pretty, that story, yeah. pretty cool though eh? yeah uh, it was funny it was, how music can really bring everybody together it was and uh yeah. you know at one moment you're kind of just describing like how you are and then the next moment your band's playing over the speakers <laughs> it was, like it's that's pretty it interesting yeah and that um, was in massachusetts no we just had crossed um where where did we cross uh windsor oh, okay cool yeah yeah, yeah, yeah detroit yeah, um, and then the second story takes place within 24 hours of the first one. Okay, cool. Uh, so our first show in the States was uh, Huntington, West Virginia. Nice. And uh, it's a good show. It's fine. And we are leaving to go to our next show 
was all the way down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The routing for this tour was a little bit fucked. It was like show at the top, all the way down to Tulsa, and then shows on the way back up. Okay. <laughs> so we're driving on the interstate in Kentucky, and I'm in the back, all nestled up in my on my bench, just like so stoked about everything. Yeah. We're in the states, man. We're we're touring in the states. I'm nice and comfy. We just played a cool show. We're going to go play a sick hardcore festival. And then all of the power in the van just shuts off. Uh-oh. Like, to- everything. Everything. And one, one of the guys is immediately like, we probably just lost the alternator. So, in the middle of nowhere, in, on the interstate in Kentucky, uh, we managed to get ourselves off the side of the road. And pitch black like cannot see shit and um since the alternator blew we couldn't even have like our four ways on or anything yeah nothing so we were just invisible yeah. to any other cars that oh might be no coming down. yeah so we one of the guys managed just to get a hold of a tow truck and we're just waiting on the side of the interstate these tractor trailers are just screaming past us because they just have no idea we're there <laughs> um so i have my phone flashlight I'm standing behind the van just just so someone could see something and yeah. come up. Yeah. And we're waiting for like an hour and a half for this tow truck to show up. And um, I'm standing behind the van waving the flashlight and a cop pulls up. And one thing I immediately thought of was uh, when we first got to the States and we met Crafter. Yeah. They were like, just so you know, the white van with Ontario plates is a bit of a red flag around like certain parts for like uh human trafficking apparently oh ri- ontario plates and- yeah white oh, man no. ontario plates that's that's what they told us so, oh no so this this cop pulls up off the side of the road and i'm immediately like oh fuck white man ontario plates yeah oh, yeah and uh so i'm like i'll talk to the cop you guys just stay there they're all just standing behind me and cop gets out of his car it's like, oh, fuck, he's got his hand on his gun. Okay, everyone take your hand out of your pockets. Everyone take your hand out of your pockets. The cop has his hand on his gun. And he is very cautiously approaching us like, I'm like, oh, fuck, this is a disaster. This is a disaster. Oh, no. And I'm trying to explain, yeah, we're a, we're a band. We just broke down. We're waiting for a tow truck. And I could tell he's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't really know if I believe what you're saying. And as I'm trying to communicate with him, the tow truck, after an hour and a half of waiting, pulls up at the perfect time. The cop's like, okay, cool. So he leaves. Um, we all f- like pile into this tow truck. Like there's seats for three people in there. We get six of us in this <laughs> tow truck, and he um, takes us like 20 minutes to this very very small town called Grayson, Kentucky, which is I think population of like four thousand people, four oh. or five thousand people. <laughs> yeah, and drops us at a uh, Super Eight so we can you know sleep and then try and find a garage in the morning to get yep. a van like that and we walk into this super eight and they have uh just like this big fountain in the lobby and it's you know like uh happy birthday streamers it's got like all the letters hanging on string yep there was one of those but it said trump garden and there was like <laughs> all of these american flags planted in the in the soil around this fountain <laughs> photos of donald trump and like pinwheels and shit and um andy who also plays the guitar in the band um is he's not white so he was like so stressed this whole yeah time. man because people were like side-eyeing him and shit totally too. um very small town in rural kentucky <laughs> jesus so um get past the trump garden uh, i sleep in the van as i always do i love sleeping in the van that's a big thing i absolutely love sleeping in the van you like it yeah in I, all weathers i I'm a very light sleeper. Okay. There's a couple big snorers in the van, so <laughs> if I can separate myself from that. Sure. I always do, and it's a little added layer of security. Yeah, yeah. Um, so next day, it's like, okay, we got to get this alternator thing addressed. So we managed to find a garage, and we're stuck there until like 2 p.m. before we, we are able to go pick the van back up again. The hotel had kicked us out. We've just been baking in the sun, in the <laughs> Kentucky sun for hours, just kicking a water bottle around, waiting for this 
got to come pick us up again. And uh, he picks us up. And we're like, finally, we have, we are playing in Tulsa tomorrow. And it's a 12 hour drive to Tulsa. We just need to get going now. Yeah. And driving back to the garage, he goes, All right, boys, I just got to pick up lunch if you don't mind. Okay, that's okay, whatever. Just make this quick. <laughs> and he pulls into Wendy's. And I'm like, Dude, why, <laughs> why are we in a Wendy's drive through? And he's ordering, he's being very creepy to the lady behind the, at the window. And he's like, yeah, chicks love this. He's like calling her like baby and sweetheart and, and sweetie. He's like, yeah, girls love it when you talk to them like this. <laughs> he's like, he's Bro. like, trust me. Yeah. He's like not married at all. He's like, trust me. I know how to get him. He's, he was the guy we noticed who was very uh, <laughs> creepy with the um, receptionist lady at the garage. Oh like, boy. Oh, this makes sense. Um, he knows how to get him. <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm sure he does uh and as we're driving back to this garage like this sorry grace in kentucky this, the place is like real run down and like we drive past this this building and it's all boarded up broken windows fence smashed over i'm like man this place is in real disrepair and it's gotta sign up for bowling alley and i'm just trying to make small small talk with the guy I'm like, all right, so as we get out of here, what, uh, where can we get some good food? Just the only thing I could think to ask the guy in the, in the moment. And he's like, the two places you got to go are the hog trough <laughs> and the bowling alley. I'm like, I thought that fucking place was condemned, dude. <laughs> like, there's no way we're getting, you know, okay, the hog trough, the hog trough <laughs> he's like you can go in there and get a steak the size of a small child i'm like bro this is fucking crazy <laughs> <laughs> so we finally get our van it's like 2 p.m and then we have to drive 12 hours to tulsa and we have no ac and we get to we leave at 2 p.m we get to almost to tulsa at like 3 a.m the next day and uh, then we played this hard, really cool hardcore festival. Nice. Yeah. What was it called? What was the fest? Promcore. Promcore. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It you was guys played awesome. that, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the coolest things that I've experienced from being in this band is getting a Hate Five Six set from Promcore in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Nice. Like, the furthest we've been from home. And we get a hate five six set as well. Yeah, that was actually my next question was uh where where was your furthest uh, mm-hmm. set from home? Tulsa. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And uh quite quite the adventure to get there. Yeah. Yeah. How are the shows on the way back? Um pretty good. We played Akron, Ohio, which was I think the sketchiest place okay. that we've been. <laughs> like we um pulled up to the venue in Akron and uh these two guys walk by and they're like, what are you guys doing here? Like, what are, what's all this? And it's like, oh, we're just a band. We're playing a show around the corner at this venue. And they walk off. And Kyle from Crafter comes out to me and is like, you know, be careful what you tell people around here. Like, okay. Like, just don't give them any details. Sure. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. All right. And the whole rest of the day, up the top of this hill, up the road, those same two guys are pacing back and forth, watching to see if we're still at the van. So we're like, Two people at the van at all times. Uh, tire irons. Out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> swinging tire irons around. And uh, while we were um, just guarding the van, there was this just big wall of this building with one door in the middle of it. And people had just been filtering in and out of this door all day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like <laughs> 50 guys come flying out of this door into the middle of the road. And some guy pulls his car up to the middle of the road. Excuse me. And they start shoot, shooting a rap video. And they oh. all have their guns out. <laughs> and they're play, playing the music through the speakers in the car. And it would the song would finish. And they'd be like, hey, yo, uh, you guys, can one of you start the song over again? And Dalton Crafter goes and gets into this guy's car. It's playing. Really? And they're just like jumping around with their guns everywhere. These two guys are pacing back and forth, watching for us at the van. <laughs> Akron is a sketchy place. And that's the show you played. That was at the show you played. That was just like the venue is on the street. And then just around the corner of the building is where they were doing all this. Shit. Nice. nice. Um, so yeah, Akron 
It's a sketchy place. Would you say that's one of the most peculiar shows you've ever played? Um. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, any weird venue setups or? Uh... Um. Nothing that flies off the page. Yeah. For me. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing crazy that I can think of, <laughs> like show setup wise. Yeah, what's your, uh, what's your go to gas station snack? I am a uh, something different every time. Sure. Kind of guy. Yeah. Like, get some corn nuts today. Tomorrow I'll have a little bit of beef jerky. <laughs> uh, never really get the same thing twice. Um, always a big bottle of water. Yeah, you always need your water. You got to stay hydrated, mm-hmm. especially for those shows. Yes, sir. <laughs> do you have any pre-show rituals? Um, we used to do like the huddle thing. Yep. Um, but we just kind of stopped doing it. I, 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 I think there are certain things that I do just like subconsciously. Mm-hmm. But nothing that's like, yeah, this is what we got to do this every. Right, every something time, that you but, need to do. Yeah, just keep my breathing under control i think is the is the main focus before we go play for sure yeah now let's say perfect lens is selling out arenas uh or the northern doesn't matter in this uh scenario you guys are selling out arenas you guys were big as metallica in this scenario what is the rock star dream rider what's in the green room waiting for you you have an unlimited budget uh okay i think i can I think I can give one thing for each of the boys. Yeah. For me and Owen, one case of lime bubbly for me and one case of uh, cherry bubbly for Owen. Oh, nice. (laughs) Uh, And for Andrew, he would need uh, chicken nuggets and fries from Pizza Pizza. (laughs) From Pizza Pizza. I I don't know. (laughs) Every time, like... (laughs) We would go out drinking, and it would be time to go home. He would be on Uber Eats ordering chicken and uh, fries from Pizza Pizza. That's the worst place <laughs> to order it from. Honestly, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I've, of course, tried it uh, of all the times he's ordered it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he would need chicken nuggets and fries from Pizza Pizza on the rider. Curtis would need a bottle of whiskey and some Dr. Pepper. And we could also throw in... Uh, Maybe like a, a bottle of champagne. There you go. Yeah. For celebratory. Yeah. I, I really like champagne, so let's throw that in there. Nice. It, is Curtis on drums for you? Oh, <laughs> I just forgot this. Yeah. Uh, so we have a new drummer. It's uh, Curtis Hercock. Yeah. He's fucking uh, sick. Yeah, yeah. I know Curtis. Yeah. He he uh, joined the band uh, about a year ago. Nice. Um, yeah. So Curtis is in the band. Very exciting. Um uh, band anecdotes exclusive announcement <laughs> uh, yeah we, i just remember we haven't mentioned that at all but yeah Curtis well, there you go there you go yeah, yeah. he came out to well, i met curtis initially he came out to a show that had like nobody playing i couldn't even tell you who played um nobody really came out but he was going hard for us he was he was really and he got he grabbed a sinner shirt and uh yeah he's always showed uh love and support so mm-hmm. yeah shout outs to curtis for sure shout outs to curtis. <laughs> now uh yeah i just got one more question what are your top five favorite artists of all time if you can't give me five give me three in no particular order uh okay i can give you a couple um foo fighters are very important to my musical journey mm-hmm um Paramore would be up there. Nice. Good I, choice. Uh, Riot is one of my favorite records of all time. Yeah. Um, I would also say Rise Against would be up there. Yeah. Like old classic Rise Against. Like I, that Rise I, Against. I go nuts for. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, and Honestly, I am a huge fan of While She Sleeps. You know the band? Yeah, yeah. I absolutely love that band. I I think they're one of the best bands in the world. They're a really cool band. I don't think they get enough credit. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, they started to explode recently, but they, they really went for a long time without mm. getting the proper due. Yeah. So I would say While She Sleeps is up there for me as well. They have that really cool music video in their basement. It's like a, I think it's like a, a, like a, a house venue that they used to play at. I, I think it's that band that I'm thinking of. Um it's like an old track, very old track. I think it's that band. But yeah, super cool band. Yeah, I absolutely love them. 
Right on. I do have one small other anecdote for you. Yes. That I just thought of. Yeah, absolutely. Fill us in. I think the worst show that we ever played was we went out east. We did a a run just ourselves out east to Halifax and back. Nice. Years ago. And it was the perfect example of highs and lows. Because we had just played Halifax the night before. And it was fucking awesome. Yeah. Tons of kids showed up. That's great. And... People were all really hyped for us. So that was awesome. We were on cloud nine. And then the next show was uh, Fredericton, New Brunswick. <laughs> and no shade to our agent at the time, but it was, we were booked at 2 p.m. in a tiny cafe in an alley on Father's Day. <laughs> so not a soul. Not yeah. a soul in the building other than the people behind the counter. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we did kind of make the best of a bad situation. Andy and I are, we both are wireless, so we can just go run around, do whatever. Right. Uh, so we got to, we got to play, I guess. So we'll just play and we're playing through the songs as fast as we can, just to get it over <laughs> with. And we're just out in the parking lot running around, like just throwing spin kicks, just <laughs> trying to have fun while yeah. we're there. And we finish, we finish flying through our songs, no breaks in between. And all of a sudden, we hear all this clapping, like just like a whole bunch of cl- uh, claps. And I'm like, where is that coming from? And <laughs> people are like, "Woo, you guys are awesome!" And it turned around, and all these people in the uh, windows of their apartments across the street, really, that were watching us, and they're like, "Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool." Um, so, oh, this is awesome. And then we talked to the promoter, and she's like, "Uh." I can't pay you anything. I'm like, well, obviously there's not a person here. She's like, but I can give you this. And this is, I think we still have this. Uh, it is the worst thing we've ever been given for playing a show with, uh, other than being given nothing. Right. Uh, it was a scratch ticket. I think it was a winner for $7. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we may have cashed it for gas. Yeah, but, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Fredericton, New Brunswick. Insult to injury. They're like, at that point, it's just like, you can just keep the ticket. Yeah. But I'll kind of, t- I, we do need the ticket. Yeah. Give me the ticket. Get out slip. Of- don't tell me that I'm getting the ticket, but just slip it in my backpack or something. We need it. We- <laughs> <laughs> I I look back on that very fondly. It, like, we've had so many shitty experiences. Yeah. But there's always something to look back on and laugh about. And sometimes some of those shittiest experiences are the greatest to laugh on because mm-hmm. they're just so shitty that you can't yeah. even believe that you're in a scenario like that, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's just like all good memories either way. Always, yeah. always. I do have another very quick Oh, perfect. No, no, I love this. I keep popping it in my head. Yeah. Uh, so the first time we ever played in the States was uh, we did a warp Tour at Darien Lake. Cool. In, I think, 2017. Nice. So, we uh, we were playing the Lemon stage, which they always would set up by the entrance. Yeah. Right? But luckily for us, they set up the entrance right next to the main stages. Oh, cool. So, there were the two main stages and then Gap and the Lemon stages where we were playing. And uh, we, our set started like halfway through some 41 was playing on the main stage. Sure. And we started about halfway through their set. And we're playing. Everything's going fine. Oh, actually, it was not going fine. The <laughs> They didn't sound check us. They were like, we were all set up waiting to go. And um, like, are they going to sound check us? And they go, you guys are good. We sound checked the last guys. And the, the last people were an acoustic duo. <laughs> so we're like, They're okay. like, you, it'll be great. Yeah, I guess we're going. Levels will be fine. Um, we're playing. Andrew was... Got his wireless pack. <laughs> and all of a sudden we're playing and then power cords are coming through his amp. And it's like, that is not us. <laughs> so the only band that was playing in the vicinity to us was Sum 41. Really? So <laughs> we were getting Sum 41. I think it was Brown Sound. We were getting yep. through our amp during yep. our set. And I could only assume <laughs> that potentially breakdowns were coming through. they were just coming through like some 41 <laughs> yeah so uh he fixed that real quick 
Um, I ate shit so hard. It was the first time I ever wiped out on stage. Oh, no. When we played that Warped Tour show. Um, you know how they have the Monster Tour waters? Yeah, yeah. So there was just tons of that everywhere. Water <laughs> all over the stage. And I went to throw a big stomp during, near the end of one of our songs. And I just... Oh, no. Boom, right oh. on my back. I was, like, <laughs> fucked up. But we were, like, 30 seconds from the end of the song. So I was just... Yeah. Laying there, finishing up the song. <laughs> um, yeah, that was... A terrible experience slamming the stage that hard but uh we finished and you know some 41 finished up and since there's a ton of people there they all a bunch of people just kind of migrated over to watch the last of our set, cool. which is really cool they're gonna come over they're like the, this breakdown kind of sounds like sounds that familiar. song <laughs> <They're> <laughs> yeah. from the some 41 song <laughs> cool um after the after the show <laughs> we're in the band area and we see uh derek Derek Wibley, from yeah, 21, walking with his parents through the band area, and they go to an SUV. He jumps in the back seat. They pull away. The license plate is some forty one rocks. Really, R O X. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's my bandic dope. That's awesome. That's great. That's great. Well, I think we can end that there. Um, if you want to let the listeners know uh, where they can find you, all the social medias, uh, and if you have anything else that you want to plug, anything at all, uh, now would be your time. Okay. Um, Perfect Limbs on Instagram, everything, just Perfect Limbs. Uh, the Northern TO on Instagram, the Northern of everything else. Uh, we got six shows coming up at the end of the month with Vampires Everywhere and Hollywood Nightmare. Uh, Ontario, Quebec. So, if you're not doing anything, come to the shows, please. And that's, I think, that's all I got. Right on. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. New Perfect Limbs coming out real soon. New Perfect Limbs. You yeah. heard it here first. Right on. And go out to those shows. Get those tickets now. Perfect. Let's end it there. Thanks, buddy. <laughs>